Hi, this is Dr. Erin Murphy, the principal at Field Middle School, and welcome to our first ever flipped parent presentation. Um, I appreciate you coming in and um, listening to this. Um, normally I've done this presentation in person, but so much has been evolving with the high school placement process that our presentation was getting shorter and shorter and shorter because so much of it is on the high school end that I really wanted to honor your time and I really wanted then to try out uh, this split presentation process to get you the information, but so you can also listen at your own convenience. At any point, feel free to email me with questions. So the purpose of this presentation is to talk about the placement, testing, and process. Um, pretty much the process is set up by the high school, but I wanted to explain it from the, the teacher's point of view. I also wanted to highlight some of the dates on the road to graduation. Earlier this summer, you received a letter from the high school. I sent it to you, but it was from the high school, talking about how the testing process has changed for this upcoming year. Um, in the past, uh, high school asked the middle school to administer the Terra Nova test at a certain point. This year, the high school, for the most part, is administering all their own tests at the high school on preset dates. And we will be just doing a few for students who need certain accommodations here. Um, they have also changed the test from the Terra Nova test to the PSAT 89. Um, so there is a pretty big change. So what you just really need to know is that this test is very new to field. We have never seen this new PSAT test. Um, the information you received about it in that letter is the same information we have. Um, our teachers will not be giving up any academic time to administer this test unless your child has a 504 or accommodation that is more than extended time. Um, in that case, we will be administering it here. Um, but otherwise, all the students, uh, other students will be going to the high school on a Saturday to take this test. The other thing that's really different, um, or not different, but something that is um, kind of part of this process that's often different for middle school parents to think about is that the field teachers really have no access to these tests. We do not score the tests. We don't get the results of these tests. And we don't distribute the results. Um, we help the high school by making sure students know when the test is and we're um, offering the accommodated test. But this is really high school information and what they do with it is um, up to them and part of their placement process. This data is used solely by the high school for high school placement. It is not data that the middle school uses. Um, so this test and kind of capping it uh, will be given on a weekend. It's the PSAT and it's really the high school information and we just assist the high school in making sure students know when and where. So when is this test this year? This year, from the letter we all received, the test will be Saturday, October 27th at Glenbrook South High School, whether your child will go to GBS or GBN. There will be a makeup day, but that is to be announced by the high school. Um, if the testing day doesn't work for you, you will need to contact the high school. This is not something you can contact me. Uh, this is something you will need to reach out to the high school and find out what your options will be. Um, we have tentatively scheduled a field teacher to be present at this test just so our students will have a familiar face um, to help alleviate any concerns. Um, I will send you this link that's on this presentation, but this is more information about the PSAT 89, and it'll give you a little overview of what kind of tests are on there um, if you wanted to look a little bit more. I think there may even be some practice um, items on there as well. So what about the placement process? The testing is just one step. Um, each department in the high school, whether it's the math or the language arts or the foreign language or the social studies or the science, determines how they will use the information they gather. Field is only responsible um, for sharing requested information. For example, um, the high school uses a lot of different data points in order to make their placement decisions. Um, how they use that is really up to them. But from our point of view, this is the type of things that they use. They use the test scores on their tests that they do. This year it's the PSAT 8-9. We also send quarter grades, and at times we may be asked for quarter grades, so we definitely share that. Um, teacher feedback. Teachers um, meet with the department chairs of each high school after the tests are in, um, and that is an opportunity for the high school to ask any questions of teachers if there are any students that they have questions about who maybe aren't necessarily fitting in a certain area. Um, this is the opportunity for our teachers to give some feedback to the high school. Um, this is not to be confused with a recommendation meeting. Uh, this is really just an opportunity for the teachers to give feedback. 
Uh, the teachers also fill out, um, fill out a study skills rubric, and I will show you that study skills rubric in a minute. Um, this is a score that teachers can assess based on their knowledge of the students this year on their study skill habits and um, how they are thinking um, and how they work on their work. This is not to be confused with an academic score. Um, we will also share MAP scores. So they take the MAP again in December of 2018, and those are also available for those teacher feedback meetings. Here's an example of the study skills rubric. If you see, if a student is in the average range, um, they complete homework better than 80% of the time, they meet deadlines with occasional exceptions, their attendance is pretty good, and they make up mixed work that's absent when provided by the teacher, although they may need occasional reminders like, hey, you weren't here yesterday, why don't you grab that from the folder, completes the assignments in, uh, in class assignments, but they may need, require some adult supervision to assist in preparation and organization. Um, we know that this, the students who are more targeted for honors level classes tend to be in the number five, very good. They always complete assignments, homework. The assigned work is correct and shows evidence of mastery. They always complete assigned work on time. They have excellent attendance. They acquire about missed work when absent and complete independently with established timeline. So they don't even need teacher prompting. They're emailing. They know where to find things. They demonstrate thoughtful participation that is relevant and completes in-class assignments and consistently shows initiative without adult direction or intervention. So number three would be a really good student. This is where we're definitely with our executive functioning program. You know, we want all students to be at a three or better, but this tells you a little bit about what they're looking for in different students. So what do you do when you get the letter um, in January or February with your child's placement and you're not happy? Um, you think the student has been missing place, that they should be in honors, or they maybe they shouldn't be, um, what do you need to do? The first thing is to call the high school and arrange to speak to their instructional supervisor for the classes in question. They will probably ask you to sign up for an appeals test, um, and they will go through that process of that appeals test. There are a number of students each year who take an appeals test. Um, you can talk to the instructional supervisor about what that appeals test looks like. We do not administer those, nor do we get copies of them or know what they, what's on them. Um, but this is the process the high school has used to um, allow students to say, hey, I, I, I think this information that they gathered doesn't really represent me. I think I can handle a more rigorous class. Um, and this is their opportunity to show it with a different type of testing environment. Um, we know a number of students do this every year, and a number of students have had their placement changed. So if you're not happy with it, please make sure that you follow that process. And this is where things can feel a little bit different. In the past, you're always used to coming to us for help, um, the field teachers or me, if you need help and assistance. Um, when we start talking about high school placement and the high school placement process, it's important to remind you that the high school is a different district and a different entity. And although we work very closely with them and they are wonderful to work with, um, we cannot help you with placement as all placement decisions are made at the high school using test scores and feedback. And we are not part of that absolute determination of what class that they are in. Um, so you really do need to reach out to the high school. And then, of course, we have the students who think that once they've been placed in January or February, that's it, they're done with school. It's important to remember that we do keep the high school up to date with quarter grades. Um, we do not want any placements changed. For instance, if they were placed in an advanced math but did not pass the rest of math um, that year, um, there's a very good chance that the placement would be changed because they haven't mastered the content. So it's important to remind students that we need to um, keep in a school mode until the end of the year. So one question I often get is what activities are on the road to graduation? Um, how do the students get to know the high school? Um, what is that process? Um, the high school and the and field have worked out several opportunities for um, the high school to work with our students on this process. Um, one thing I just want to highlight is that the high school does send out a lot of different information about some of their um, curriculum night and activities night and maybe some other events depending on the high school. Please, please, please take a look at our road to graduation as well as any emails you get from the high school because those activities are so key to success at the high school because those are the nights that parents and students really get a strong look at what they need to know about being a GBS or a GBN student. Um, we get dates from the high school, but the high school may change those dates and may not tell us those dates. So it's important. Um, they're really good at communicating, but 
for you to use the different emails that the high school gives you. Um, and if I hear the change in dates, I will also let you know. Um, there are a couple opportunities that are more student-based uh, rather than student and parent-based. Um, in January, the high school administration comes to field to talk to students. We divide them up into GBS groups and GBN groups. Um, and administrators, um, deans come, and they really walk the students through um, all the information they need to know for registering and becoming a GBS or GBN student. Um, after the students um, go to the curriculum night or the act and the activities night and they get their uh, class list, uh, the students board a bus from field with the field teachers and we take them over to either GBS or GBN and they meet with their counselor to actually register for classes at the high school. Uh, this is why it's so important that you go to these different things that the high school offers because um, that'll help you know how to guide your student on this high school registration process. Their counselors do a great job, but they are going on their own to the high school to register for their classes. So that's a really um, important thing just to keep in mind. These are both great events, um, and the high school does just a wonderful job with the students.